Good morning, Howard. Good morning, Rebecca. How are you? I, I think I just have me. Is Rebecca here too? Uh, let me check. Not yet. Because it, it seems to be showing me as the host, which is a bit of a surprise. <laughs> That's all right. I'm going to do it for the housing trust so I know how to do it. Hmm. Let's go. And here's Jim. Well, apparently, uh, apparently I'm hosting this meeting. I didn't expect that. <laughs> I think I do recall, um, Harry, that um, Rebecca said she wouldn't be able to um, to attend this one. Okay, well, I know Rebecca Slick is away. Um, uh, Rebecca Eldridge also. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, I just clicked on join meeting and next thing I knew I was the host, but that's fine. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop the recording for right now. Great. Well, good morning, everybody. This is a morning. meeting of the 95 Lawrence Road Task Force Evaluation Committee. Um, I want to thank um, Jim for arranging to have Paul Millet with us today to give us the whole scoop on everything we need to know about the water tower and surrounding area. Um, so I'd love to start with you, Paul. Um, sure. Um, so I spoke with Jim briefly yesterday and I, in preparation, what, I downloaded the three proposal documents and basically overlaid their concept drawings with the existing water tank and the existing water pipe and electrical line that goes to the tank. Um, now, realizing that these are early concept drawings from each development team, um, if I can do share screen, I have an overlay. Let me try and do the share screen here, if you don't mind. Yeah, if I can. Do I have to make you a co-host to allow you to share the screen, Paul? Um, you may. I know I do Teams a lot. Too. I, don't, I don't recall, Harry, you may need to do that. Um, I'm not an expert. I, I do Teams a lot rather than Zoom, but I don't know. I think you do. OK, well. I think you do. You OK, well, right. can, you can are you now. My, OK, can you see my screen? Not yet. OK, let me do this. Apologies. All right, share screen. Does that work? No, oh, apparently not. So I, oh, there we go. Okay. So just so, so this is the civic the CIV ICO. This is the civic layout. So the yep. water tank. Uh, can you hear me clearly? Yes. Yeah. Okay. 
So what we do is I overlaid the water tank and the access road, which is this road here off of um, Long Pond. Long, Long Pond, Pond excuse me, yeah. And then, and then Lawrence Road is over here. The, in general, there are no showstoppers with either of the three development plans. There are some minor issues that need to be resolved as the final design develops over the next several months or so. So the blue line here is the water pipe that comes out of the tank, goes down Lawrence Road, and there's also a parallel electrical line. So in concept, it looks like, you know, obviously this pipe and conduit need, need to stay as is, and they show some trees here. I mean, this is concept level drawing, so this appears to be okay. And I can send these as, as a PDF to Harry or Jim or to whomever after the meeting is over, just so you have a record. Okay. So. Uh -huh. My only, con my only concern here with, with the Civico proposal is, so that our existing access road is this shown here. They appear to have this kind of meandering, you know, path here along our access road. We would need to be able to preserve access to the water tank for routine maintenance and for painting in the future. So the final design of this access road, of the proposed access road to the tank needs to preserve unlimited access to the existing tank for, for maintenance. Uh, let me see if I can go across here. So, so the, the, that, that was the Civico proposal. That's, and this is just a, a different overlay. The other proposal from, the second proposal from, the, the, from TCB. That, that looks like, oh yeah. No, that looks like POA. That's POA. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm from POA, excuse me. So this, this, this is the POA plan. And again, this is, yeah, with the overlay. There, there's less interference here, if you will, with the water tank access road. This is the access road. This is the water line and the electrical conduit. This appears to be have minimal issues. Again, um, we need to just, whatever agreement is formalized with the uh, selected de de developer needs to have appropriate language to preserve access to the water tank for routine maintenance. So with this proposal, I don't see any obvious conflicts. Um, then going to the final submission from, this is the, uh, the TCB layout. Mm -hmm. um, there don't appear to be any issues here. This is the water line and the electrical conduit. This is the access road. Their green pipe is their sewer force main, which crosses the water pipe. We would have to have appropriate separation both vertically between the sewer pipe and the water pipe, obviously. They show their wastewater treatment plant over here to the right of the access road. I'm just looking at it from a water system point of view, but this appears to be reasonable. Um, so I guess in summary, the only, the biggest concern I have is with the, um, this layout here, the uh, Civico, C-I-V-I-C-O layout, the access road needs to be adjusted or modified during the final design to, you know, provide free and clear access to the water tank for, for maintenance. Um, the other, I, I don't need to share my screen anymore. That's pretty much it. Um, I will stop sharing. So the only other concern would be the detailed design of the water pipe through the development to each of the units obviously hasn't been done at this stage. It's pretty um, routine engineering and I know they haven't gotten that far yet, but the actual number of hydrants on the property and the size of the services to the, each building would need to be provided during final design. But that's by no means a, uh, a showstopper at, at this time. And then I guess finally, whatever other access requirements the fire chief may have for, you know, fire vehicle access to and from the property is a separate issue, which I'm sure the fire chief can comment on. But I mean, in summary, there are really no showstoppers. The access road issue needs to be tweaked during final design. And then the separation, the horizontal and vertical separation between water and sewer pipes need to, needs to be respected as well as the design develops. Again, these are concept plans. I mean, they're they're good concept plans, but they're early stage concepts. And I will stop there. Uh, Jan, you have a question? When you say you need access for maintenance, is that vehicle access or um, other kinds of access? Uh, it's both, Jan. I mean, ultimately the water tank, water tanks need to be I know White Water has a regular, like you know, pickup size truck that goes out there every day. That's a small vehicle, but water tanks need to be painted every 15 to 20 years. So, within the next 10 years, the town will need to paint the water tank, which means larger equipment. You know, needs to shroud the tank, sandblast the paint, paint the tank. So you need 
larger equipment and we have a fenced in area around the tank jan that you're probably aware of right it's a big, it, so there's a circle and then there's an outer circle around the tank yes that's, that's all that all the equipment can go in that outer circle if you will but we're going to need some access along the access in and out. Yeah. yeah okay that's what i wondered thank you gary um, Jim, I'm just thinking that if the water tank needs to be uh, repainted in the next 10 years, and for the sake of argument, um, that the uh, construction will be completed in approximately five years for 95 Lawrence, four to five years, maybe it makes sense to plan the water tower painting before the finish of right. the uh, building, because yeah. otherwise we'll have to deal with that just shortly into the... Right. The cycle. So just a just a thought. I, I have a second question. It's not really Paul's area, but the the wastewater treatment is the towns, not the developers. So is the siting of the um, the development affect the location of the wastewater treatment plant, or will it pretty much go the same place no matter what? I mean, I can briefly comment on it, but it, it's not my I understand, it. right. Yeah, but, but, but I, I guess I'll give you the benefit of my engineering observation. It looks like each developer has their own, you know, concept layout for where the, the plant will go on the site. Um, my only comment would be on the one of the uh, the TCB layout has the wastewater treatment plant to the right of the existing access road and obviously closer to an existing residence house on um, Lawrence um, Long Pond, on, on Long Pond Road. So, right. Wastewater treatment plants obviously uh, can have some odor issues. Um, again, just a, a comment should be, there should be odor control included in the wastewater treatment plant for obvious odor control reasons. I had trouble finding it on the other two drawings. Um, does everybody else know where the wastewater was sited on? Well, one other? was in the very back. Um... Oh. Maybe Paul can answer that. Yeah, yeah I guess Harry, if I guess I, I may try and do share screen again. So sure. yep. Can you see this? Yep. So <clears throat> that's civic though. Hang on. So that's the civic though. I apologize. Mm -hmm. Oh. This is POA. Yeah, you know, you'd, you'd have to ask me I I know where it is. Okay, let me back back up here. It's the easy one on the third one, the uh the, the TCB layout, it's over mm -hmm. here on the right-hand side of the existing uh, right. roadway. Mm -hmm. uh, hold on. I recall, uh, yeah, I would need to, to pull it out on a different drawing, I apologize. Uh, I recall it was down to the, there was one of them had it down here on the lower left side of the, of the drawing, if you will. Okay, uh, I'll look again. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But I, was... I guess, I guess, I, I'm, Jim, I know, I assume somebody else is looking at the wastewater portions of this job and right. that's going to be commented on, on separately. Right, yes. Yeah, we'll have our clean water slash wastewater committee uh, weighing in, you know, like you have sort of early to give us some heads up. And um, you mentioned the fenced area. Uh, that has to remain fenced as is, correct or not? Yeah, the fenced the fenced area, the fenced circle around the tank, uh, Elaine. Yes, should remain fenced as is. There is some the fenced area along the access road coming up from Long Pond could be a, that can be adjusted and mm -hmm. that can be you know modified within reason. Okay. Any, anybody have any other questions for Paul, Kathleen? Yeah, um, Paul, I, I have um, walked the site fairly recently, and um, it looks to me like the water tank needs to be painted or cleaned now. Um, right. It's rather unsightly, and um, I, 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 I would hesitate to try and think we can push it off for another four or five years. Jim, do you have an answer for that? Yeah, we have actually are waiting now on, we have proposals on the cleaning of that and the inspection of the tank. Um, and the, the only reason that it's been delayed is that we're in the midst of recontracting with for the uh, operating uh, the, the water system operator. In this case, it's Whitewater 
Whether, whether it will be white water going forward or not, I'm, I can't say for sure, but uh, that RFP will be going out within the next um, several weeks. And, uh, and um, my second part of the question is um, with regard to the cleaning, Jim, are you foreseeing um, um, conflict or problems with the abutting neighbor as have been in the past? Uh, I, know, I know who you're referring to there, yeah. Um, uh, I think we will give them notice. I'm not sure exactly what process they will use to do the cleaning. What the, the status of it at this point is what you're seeing on the tank is essentially um, mold uh, and it's due to condensation on the lower part of the tank resulting in mold and uh, it cleaned without sandblasting apparently. Um, but they will be doing a full inspection of the tank at the same time. And that means the inside of the tank as well. Great, thank you. Okay, any other questions? No, thank you, Paul. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. So I will send um, Jim Hood just a PDF of the, of the drawings I, I commented on so you have them and I'm happy to help. Uh, that would be great, Jim. Just so we know that I've also reached out to Rich Pauley uh, and asked him that we, would hopefully like to have him comment on the, the, this issue as well in terms of the uh, impact on the, um, you know, the fire department. Okay, yeah. thank you so much, Paul. Oh, Harry. Yeah, yeah, I guess it was just one final comment on to add, to add to Jim's comment. The actual width of the, of the roadway through the development needs to be wide enough, obviously, for emergency vehicles. Right. Um, it seems trivial, but it's an important basic issue that sometimes becomes an issue um, but, but yeah, it, it, it needs to be, uh, make sure it's wide enough for emergency vehicles and fire trucks to have free and clear access. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I had a conversation with Rich Pauley yesterday on another matter and mentioned to him that we had three proposals and that uh, perhaps his comments earlier would be better than later. And I sent him uh, a link to the three proposals. Good. So I did that yesterday. Uh, also, process-related issue, Sunday, I reissued the RFQ for financial review of the developer pro formas and sent it to nine individuals um, asking for proposals back by uh, uh, Tuesday after Labor Day, next Tuesday. Uh, two so far have said they uh, won't be able, they just don't have the time to do it, so... Um, there are seven more to be heard from. And so that's where that is. Okay. All right. Can I ask Laura a question, Elaine? Laura, uh, if we Paul, can... if you, thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you. you thank, really appreciate it. <clears throat> uh, Laura, if we can't get someone to do the financial review, is that something either you or MH, somebody else at MHV could maybe help us with if we can't, can't get someone in that time period? Um. Yeah, you're, you're muted. Sorry, I have things, machinery going here. So um, hopefully you can still hear me. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have um, <clears throat> typically I would do this. So I would, I, I'll have to talk to my our general counsel because you have um, letters of interest, I think, from MHP for financing. Right, could be mm -hmm. Right, yeah. <clears throat> Harry, did you send it by any chance to Paul Ryshinskis again? I sent it to everybody I had originally sent it to. Okay. Uh, and, and let them know it was a revised request with a longer uh, deliverable date. Yeah. Um, if Paul wasn't on that list, maybe we can send it to him again. <laughs> okay. uh, let me just take a look and see whether uh, okay. he was on that list. Uh, his name again? Paul Ryshinskis. He was one of the first two names that Laura gave us. I, I had 
two names from Laura, uh, Paula Schnepp and Maura Songus. Those oh. are, so there must be another email floating around with other yes. names. That... Yeah, I apologize. I thought I made a, a complete list and then I okay. mustn't have saved it properly. <laughs> okay, I well, I'm, I, I, I'll send I you will, <laughs> Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll send you the log that shows exactly who I've sent stuff to and where it's gone. Okay. And we can clean that up in the next right. uh, few, you know, maybe this afternoon or tomorrow morning. Yeah. Yeah. Okie doke. All right. Well, um, well, I think the next order of business is to work through our two other, um, our first pass through the uh, evaluation criteria um, for Civico and TCB. Um, can we start with Civico? Sure. I think we might be able to move through both a little faster based on our experience with the first one. Um, Did anyone have trouble printing that new spreadsheet that Laura sent? Because I couldn't oh. get it to format. I, 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 I don't have it either, so. I don't either. I don't I have, either. I haven't tried yet. She, Laura just sent it right before the meeting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been so I, using the, the previous document. Yeah, we'll work. We'll, I'll check it out after. So. All right, pencils are ready. All right. <laughs> Where's my pencil? There it is. <laughs> All right, so we're looking at Civico. Does anybody have Jay's cell phone number and want to text him and see if he can join us? I probably do. Um, maybe I'll give that a try. <clears throat> Might have thought it was hey, 10 o'clock. OK, so give the developer experience and capacity comments on this section. Hi, Elaine. Harry. Um, I was looking to see which projects they had done, they had identified as comparable. And I came away with uh, uh, just two of them as being listed by them. And so I'm just trying to figure out whether, uh, you know, what's what. Lincoln and um, uh, one in the Western Mass, or? He said, uh, let's see. Civico developments in Lincoln and Reading were 60 and 55 units respectfully, each received oh. funding from DHCD and have been leased in accordance with their guidelines. Yeah. So that's two. two. I didn't see anything about the, the Lincoln I don't know. No, I did. I'm sorry. But uh, that's that's two that are listed as opposed to four or more projects. I had, I had identified those at two also. Um, I mean, I think their, their method is more to put, as they said, they they put together a team for the specific project. Not I mean, so they, they build teams in different ways. But to me, there were two mm -hmm. that were closer than anything else. So. Okay, well, that was one concern I had about experience and capacity. Um, the other one, which I mentioned briefly last time was the fact that they have not identified a property um, uh, manager. Um, they've said they'll hire one and they've laid out some criteria, but okay. one, thought that occurred to me as a result of our field trip uh, on Monday was that if the developer who constructs the project also manages the project, you eliminate a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, finger pointing this way when things go, you know, when right. things 
go wrong that are related to the construction itself. So if you have the same entity building it and managing it, they, they kind of own all the problems and there's no blame fixing exercises that go on, or at least it's within the organization instead of you know uh, between two organizations. So that's, a, that's another concern I have. I know we didn't require them. Uh, I don't think we required them to identify a, a management entity, but the absence of one is, and the indication that it won't be them is a little bit of a concern. Yeah, we, di we didn't, we said it could be named later. And, mm -hmm. um, and Laura. I'll just respond neutrally on that, that it is um, often the case that there's only a few developers that also have a management arm. Mm -hmm. And so it's often the case that management is, um, is procured later um, because otherwise it's just too early in the process for either the, for the management companies typically to, to, um, to commit to anything at this stage. Um, so, right. I did notice in reading through the other two also that they said primarily they are the managers of their properties, but sometimes they also use a third party. So I guess those are, that's the question we'll want to ask the other two if they are committing to their own management team for our project. Um, I'd, you know, anything else under that category? I mean, it, it, you know, it's significantly less experience, um, but they are, I th they look like they're, they're on their way to a long career, I hope. <laughs> um, yeah, they, I think they're a six year old organization. So right. they're a little bit younger than some of the others. I, 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 can we ask clarifying questions of them? Because I, I wasn't clear in the, the other um, major development they offered, Ace Flats and Reading, mm -hmm. whether they were in fact the primary developer or whether it was trade growth companies. So I, I'd like, it just says the project is a partnership. Yeah, well. I mean, the others say, you know, fairly clearly, we're the developer, we're the prime, we're, you know. Is that, Laura, can we ask what the relationship was to the East um, Bats? Yeah, you should. I'm, I haven't, I didn't read the development team, um, uh, their explanation, but um, Civico is a, um, combination of two other developers that have that have um, merged together oh. in this for a couple of projects. So I'm not sure that it says it there, but if it doesn't, I mean, I think it's a legitimate question to ask them. To clarify um, the relationship. Yeah. Okay. Do you think it would be more chancy, Laura? <laughs> I'm not sure that's a question we can ask. No, I'm asking Laura. I'm not asking them. No, that's what I mean. <laughs> well, um, I would say ask their ask for their um, experience. I think I don't. Okay. I don't think so, but okay, that's my opinion. Great, because I love their buildings, so I'd like to keep them in the mix as long as we can. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so we'll move on to affordability. That's an interesting one. Yeah. They're the, they're the only one of the three that seem to be wanting to expand up to 100 or 110, but there's also a very small number at the lower. Kathleen? Um. Yeah, I, I actually had more to say on the first category, okay. developer okay. experience. I, I went to um, page five in their proposal to us and highlighted um, why they felt um, you know, qualified um, as a young company. Um, I'll also say that it's probably um, one of the biggest reasons that I like them. 
um, is because they are young and um, kind of thinking outside the box in so many different ways uh, here for us. Um, and it goes back to our, all right, so let's skip that part. Let's go to affordability. Um, it goes to a, a comment that Harry made at our last meeting. This particular developer um, mentions several times in their proposal to us about the missing middle. Um, and this is exactly what's happening in so many communities across the Cape is the middle class is just, they're gone. They're, they're, they're just gone. And here we have um, um, a developer who's proposing to, um, to really kind of, you know, look at that, um, that uh, you know, as part of their, their who they're gonna be renting to. Um, so I, I thought they met, um, you know, I, I think they're, they're, again, thinking outside the box a little bit, and this is why I like this one, so. That's that's my comments. Um, Laura, do you think in their general presentation, the others will address why they didn't choose to go above 80%? Or is that a question we would ask them to clarify their decision about that? Yeah, you should, you can ask them to, um, to uh, clarify. Um, you know, I'm, I can speculate, but you know, it's all around funding sources. Mm -hmm. It also might have something to do with the fact that highly advantageous says at least 85%. So they may have felt that, and uh, that's partly my fault, I guess, because, um, my concept here was affordable housing, um, and I wasn't so much thinking about market uh, housing for the middle class, Kathleen. So um, mm -hmm. maybe seeing that wanting to be highly advantageous, they just went all the way with the 80% instead of including the rest, I don't know. It appears that the financial has to, getting it to work has to do with keeping the AMI low because they get certain um, tax credits. And I would like to hear the financial side of it, why they think they can make a go of it without using these tax credits. It's like an area I don't understand and need some help with. Um, you might, um, yeah, that that you know the the kind of missing middle, the people above eighty percent of AMI and below one hundred twenty or one hundred twenty five percent is certainly an issue in Wellfleet. The um, RFP said uh, uh, at least seventy percent affordable to eighty percent AMI was right. some targeted that was advantageous and then at least 85 percent affordable to 80 percent ami or below that was highly advantageous and they say our proposed project includes 100 percent of the units to be deed restricted with over 70 percent of the units affordable at 80 percent ami or below so that seems to fall in the advantageous box per our uh, evaluation criteria rather than in the highly advantageous right. box. Right. So I've kind of placed them there based on, um, on the affordability issue. Right, right. And I, I had a question um, that I think was answered with Gulf Pond Road where even the ones at 100%, there were two at 100%, but they still could qualify to be deed restricted. I don't know if Laura's still with us and could speak to how that works if in a bigger development, if you have some that are over 80, they can still be count or counted towards the SHI somehow. There's some there's something about that. When Laura comes back, we'll ask. <laughs> Jan? 
but the whole funding of this is um, not really based on tax credits the same way the other two are. Um, it, it's uh, for profit, which makes it different right away. It's um, lending um, from banks. Uh, so it's an entirely different process. And so they wouldn't be as bound by the tax credit thing as the other two. Uh, my, that's my thought anyway. Any more on affordability? Uh, I, a strange thing, and this is maybe semantics, but the term missing middle supposedly really refers to a type of building, not people that are caught in the middle. It's the missing middle kind of housing for people. That's, it's kind of an odd thing, um, but I had always thought it meant people, but in general, the term refers to a kind of housing, but, it, but it's providing the kind of housing that doesn't exist in a way on the Cape. Um, so it's so kind of a funny thing. All right, any more on affordability for civic house? Site design. Let's see. Well, we talked about the access road to the water tower. And missing. I think what they did there is easy enough to be <laughs> dealt with, according to what Paul said. It was just a path, really. So Right. Um, Elaine, again, Kathleen, on page seven, um, they're, um, they're call, they, they say they're advantageous. Um, the proposal meets some or all of the RFP site design criteria with thoughtful building siting, safe, efficient traffic flow, and natural buffers to surrounding neighborhoods. Um, meets, in, in their own words, they say their site design meets some or all. So I'm, I'm assuming that they know um, there's gonna be some tweaking um, one way or the other. They also say um, in regard to how they measure up to site design, the buildings distribute density across the site in structures reminiscent of traditional single family Cape Cod style homes. Two access points from Lawrence Road exist and the long pond buffer is preserved. We specifically requested that mm -hmm. in the RFP. Um, so I, I think they came up um, well, highly advantageous with regard to site design. Mm -hmm. Uh, does anybody else have any comments on that? Yeah, I love their site design. So, yeah. I, fe I felt that maybe they were coming a little too close to abutting the property line with the way they had the buildings laid out. Um, you know, I I I, I like their I like their design too, and I've seen a lot of great proposals from Union Studios. And they did good work, um, but I but I felt like the one house that was like on the other side of the water tower that was not something that that would you know that we would want. But um, they did yeah. definitely preserve the long pond road buffer um, very well. Yeah, I had I had the same note. I said uh, yes, but it appears to be less buffer than POA or TCB, and and in fact. Um, they go pretty close to the property line on, on two sides and, also, and of course on Lawrence Road too. Um, also, again, we have to deal with their treatment of the water tower and make sure that they have a clear understanding of what the limitations are there because they just kind of show it with roads around it and that may not meet um, requirements for an exclusive access area around a water tower. There are some small things that aren't included. I think just because this uh, site design doesn't rise to the level of detail yet, um, then it would have to have to show it. Things like uh, underground utilities, exterior lighting, designated areas for snow, uh, bike racks. Bike racks uh, are inside. 
They do okay. have white graphs. They're inside the holes. Okay, thank you, Jan. Okay, yeah. I can remove that question mark. Those, I, I think, are not deal killers. They're just things that just haven't been dealt with yet. Right. Right. Um, sure. Harry? I mean, Gary? <laughs> I struggled a little bit, Harry, with some of the other things that, that weren't there. Um, office space and, and storage space just not included uh, yet. But the question I have is if you look at that and then now look at the scoring, how do we weigh that? Uh, so are some, are we going to put a category that's th this criteria is more important than than other criteria? Help, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> Each category is weighed the same. That's the way you. And and within the category, uh, Laura. So if let's just take for instance. Uh, uh, Com, uh, office space for management. I didn't see that on there. So uh, whether it's there or not, the question is, is that way the same as we like the design? <laughs> um, probably, I mean, I, I guess it depends on how important um, office space is. You know, without office space, you don't have someone on, on site. Yeah. Right, which is, and they haven't decided if they're going to have management yet. So, well, that's what I'm saying is that so how well, do you have they'll have what I'm trying to figure out is how to weigh it in our, you know, in our scale. In our, it's clearly not there, but yeah, I, does that I just had, allow them. I had the same concern because the uh, highly advantageous criteria says proposal meets or exceeds all criteria, and you know, this one is silent on a couple of truly yeah. minor items, does that immediately require them to be uh, ranked as advantageous? Or can we say, uh, yeah, close enough, close enough for government work. Uh, we'll deal with the, where you plow the snow uh, later in the process, which is what I'm inclined to do. I, I hate to, yeah, to, I, I agree. to kill a, a huge project based on the fact that they don't specifically say how they're going to deal with exterior lighting because somewhere or along the line that's going to get dealt with. Right. Yeah. Uh, or snow for that matter. Yeah, that's right. another one. Yeah. Um, I think one of the big things in the site design <laughs> section that we got a big, a lot of feedback at the site visits was adequate parking. Yes. We're not there yet, but yeah. yeah. What's under site, site design? It says adequate parking for residents and visitors. Yep. Sorry. We're in the site design section. Right. Um, and the Civico is quite diverse. I couldn't quite, I, I don't know if they told us how many parking places. I Civico I has 1.56 chairs. Yeah, one, they have, okay. they so they're actually the over. Most. The other two are 1.1 1. 1 1 and 1.3. 1. 1. So theirs is the most parking. Right. So they Laura, have, we, we had a discussion after the site visit is we heard parking as, as a, a really important thing. And each of that, each of the, uh, well, two of the three have proposed significantly less than the than the 1.5 required by our zoning. And we, regardless of it being required by zoning, we think it's really important to have adequate parking. Um, how, how do we address that now through this process? Uh, can, we, can we ask them at this point? And how does it change the cost of the bids? And I mean, you can, you can ask them how they think that their parking scheme, you know, is is adequate, how it meets that definition. Right. Um, I would look to the um, various, all the projects had different unit sizes. So just to say 1.5 per unit, if you have a studio, um, you know, you're gonna be on the lower end of that, you know, you and, so I would, I would look to that. And then also um, you could ask, you know, if you don't think that what they've proposed is adequate, um, you can say, have you thought of other areas for overflow parking? Um, 
and you know again that's going to eat into whatever buffers they have or what or green space right. but um those are fair the fair questions to ask are those questions oh. that we send them prior to their presentation and ask them to comment on and i would think you would to be fair to everyone you should right. ask how yeah. you know how does your parking ratio um meet the definition of adequate um and um, what's your plan B? And Laura, I have a question. Um, it's Kathleen. If, yes. if in fact we don't <clears throat> um, ask about parking um, at this stage of the process and we were to select a developer, um, wouldn't these questions um, with regard to parking uh, come up before the ZBA, the Zoning Board of Appeals? Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. so I mean, but one, one way or the other, they're going to have to deliver on parking if it's not adequate. Right. I think the, the difference or the, um, you don't want to set up a redesign at permitting right. if you can help it. Um, so getting those questions answered early is better. This is all conceptual. So things obviously can move around. Um, but once they're awarded, they have to, pretty much stick to what we say unless you know to, to what they've what they've proposed right. until permitting can change it but then you then have to go back and look to see you know if that would have changed their scoring so um i would i would take it on now yeah let them give an answer they might not have to plot it out for you, but they have to have, they should have a reasonable response to that. Yeah. Um, if I may, because to me, there's nothing here on any of the plans more important than the parking. I've talked with people lately um, because of what we saw on Monday um, who have lived in multifamily situations or apartments or whatever, and they say the sorest subject and the thing that divides neighbors and drives people crazy is not enough parking places. And it's just key. And one of the developers here has said they're going to go for a variance in the 40B process because of our 1.5 requirement. I don't even think 1.5 is enough for this development with families. You can have, and, and we have, people have visitors. They have Sunday afternoon parties and, and where do people park? And then they get so angry, you're parking. I can't carry my groceries in, there's no place to park. Uh, I can't think of anything more important than the parking places for harmony in, in a dwelling. So I would advocate, please sending that out to the three developers before they come on the 10th. I have a couple of questions about that. Um, I mean, on weekends, there's a lot of parking at the school uh, um, and that's town, is that town parking? I mean, people can't be, that can be, used as parking when the school is not in session. So that might be a little bit of their thinking, but we also don't want it to be used during school and have that be an issue too. But Laura, um, our site includes a parking lot already, which we sort of talked about. And I guess we've realized we didn't want it to say we want it to remain, but should it be identified as a reasonable accommodation for overflow parking? Is there, how do we potentially discuss that or evaluate that? I guess I'm not quite getting the, the there, parking there, that's along the <laughs> when, when the temporary police station was on oh, yeah. our site, they, pay, they paved a parking lot there. Yeah. 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 And that's included in our six acres, I believe. Yeah, it is. And I think most of the of the um, most of the proposals absorb that into there, not as parking. Right. Yeah. They greened it. They greened, they greened it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, 
you know, I think, well, I mean, I you know, it's kind of late at this stage to say, well, we don't want you to green that. We want you to put it as parking, but it may be a, a fallback. If they're asked to do a fallback to add more parking, they probably have that. Yeah, area. It, it actually, it, it looks like Civico could retain part of that at the expense yeah. of pocket part it. Pocket Park A. Park A. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but I think that's also where there's their septic thing is, right? Isn't that where their tank is? I think it's on the other side, Jan. For Civica? No, double check. How do we know where it is? I don't see it. Well, they said it someplace. <laughs> I saw it somewhere. Uh, <laughs> I get, I'm getting, beginning to get very confused. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Oh dear. Okay, well, that's that we can keep all that in mind yeah. as we look at these things. Every time we talk, I go back and see things on the plans I didn't notice yeah. there before. So I think, but I think having them clearly identify those areas as part of their proposal would be, their presentation would be important. Right. Okay. Anything else on site design? Okay. Infrastructure and green design. They mentioned uh, solar arrays, but I did not see uh, they, they mentioned lead, definitely lead. Um, they mentioned potential, potential to have roof solar ready, I believe. But then they talked about um, solar just... arrays, and I, I didn't see anything identified on the property and whether they're talking about solar arrays, potential solar arrays on the property or investiga investigating ways to um, tap in to somebody else's system. Anybody else see the solar arrays on their phones? Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I haven't found it yet. No, they have their mechanical well. Well, it's their rooftops, no? Hi, Jay. I mean, what I read was that the only thing was that the roofs are positioned in such a way that they could support. I all sorry, I'm late. That's okay. <laughs> we're we're doing Civica. Got the day mixed up. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, I can't hear anybody. Oh. <laughs> I let Jay in, but okay. Yep. Yeah. I think Jay is trying to set it so he's hearing us. I guess so. I think it, I think it said you're when sharing that, screen with him. Yeah, you, you chose sharing screen, Harry. Instead of or Jay. Yeah. Sorry, I was late. I got the day mixed up. No problem. Okay. Um, so back to the full screen. I can't. For some reason, I'm. <sighs> uh, escape would get you out of that. I don't know. We're looking at your screen, so I think. I don't know how to get out of it. I think it's the. I think. Uh, it's who's escape. ever in control. <laughs> I think escape gets you out of full screen and then you should be able to click on stop sharing. You should see a little bar at the top. I think I just, there, you go. there, we, go. there we go. I just went off to screen sharing and did stop participant sharing. I don't know what I did, but it worked. Okay, well, it, it, it does, when they talk about solar, it does say, and I'm looking at the development concept, which is 72 and 73. It just says our goal will be to maximize the energy output from decentralized solar arrays to reduce reliance on electricity purchased from the grid. 
period. So it's, you know, it's kind of an aspirational statement, but at least it's right. there. Right. And does that indicate they would be looking for other solar arrays elsewhere so. that they could use to fund the... Sounds like it. For Not their rooftops. Clear. There's sufficient rooftop to do right. a lot. So. We're looking at Civico, Jay. Okay. We're on to infrastructure and green design, but if you have any other comments on them when we're done, love to hear them. You're right about the septic thing. It was upside down. I was looking at it. It is on the um, other side. So um, again, they, they say that, um, that they are a lead, um, you know, green building standard like lead. Mm -hmm. um, they say with regard to infrastructure, that they are going to fund 44% of the cost of the phase, first phase of the wastewater system. Right. Um, and that they are their design favorably orients rooftops for solar panels. I believe we asked for that in the RFP. Mm -hmm. um, they, they include electric charging stations in, quote, a parking court. And um, the uh, they are going to leverage green um, stormwater infrastructure. Um, so uh, again, they, they do state how they're going to address um, the wastewater, solar, um, and stormwater um, in, in the project. Okay. Any more comments on this section? Uh, Elaine? Yeah. Um, on our site visit, we heard consistently that air conditioning was a really good thing to, to do. Um, and that some of the projects, actually a new project, uh, had not done it. And that the one thing she said she would change is air conditioning. We didn't include that, as I recall, as a criteria. Um, but, but if we want that, can we, can we say something about it now? Or can we ask a question about whether air conditioning is included? Well, if I can't remember, I, do they mention heat pumps specifically, Civico? Well, no, it, they don't. It of itself doesn't, doesn't deliver air conditioning. But my question is really to Laura. So we, we've learned that that's an issue. Laura, can we ask in our questions or can we ask for clarification today about uh, do they provide air conditioning? You can ask the question, but it's not part of your scoring system. Okay. But by I, I have to, it's 10 o'clock. I have to oh. leave you. All right. Um, okay. If, you Thank know, you. if there's any questions that you have, um, you know, we can um, just write them down so that next time we can um, answer them. Okay. Right. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Bye, Laura. Bye. Bye. So Elaine, could we, add, and, and I'm happy to have other people who are on the site visit chime in on this, but I, I heard loud and clear, it sounded like that, that was a really important thing to provide. Mm -hmm. um, and can we ask that question <laughs> are they including air conditioning? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I think we have in the other two proposals, they mentioned heat pumps for heating and cooling. We want to make sure of that. So right. sure. Civico because, hasn't addressed that, I feel like. But what did other people hear on the, on the site visit? Oh, definitely. Same, same thing. No doubt about it. Yep. Yeah. Could we ask a question like, how would you incorporate air conditioning? Would you want to allow individual units to get their own and just see, make it an open question? Well, I, if they didn't mention the system they're going to use, that's the big question we have to ask and then ask them to detail it. The problem with air conditioning is it's expensive. And... Um... So, you know, as Olga suggests, maybe allowing individual units or having individual units, I don't know, maybe. Yeah. They, they recommend, Jan, during the site visit, she specifically. Yeah, I know. It's also summer. 
it was very hot. <laughs> and and you're listening to somebody who's got management responsibilities as opposed to the developer. Yeah. And even though they operate under the same umbrella, yeah. and we saw this time and time again Monday that the you know the guy that's fixing the appliances has quite a different view on whether they should be provided. Um, perhaps then the developer does. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. So if, if it, somehow if it's not clear in their proposal, I think it is clear in the other two, but we'll go back and make sure right. about that. So we, should, we should ask about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, with regard to the expense, what we heard from all of the places we went to was that the tenants pay the utilities. But it, and they, they some of them use the expression the the, the plug load which is that right. all the plugs are metered and the right. tenants pay for that but the heat uh is included in the rent and uh, in one place they did a kind of an after the fact assessment to kind of you know credit that you know adjust that all i'm raising uh, harry mm -hmm. is what is the responsibility of the tenant for the payment of utilities going forward? Um, yeah. and we could get clarification of that. Yeah, I, I suspect anything that gets plugged into a wall outlet the tenant pays for. Uh, I think heat, heat and light are part of the, the, the rent. Am I correct on that? I, I don't know that you can make that assumption from either what we heard, Harry, on Monday or from the proposals? I'm just asking, I'd like to have clarity as to. Yeah. I'm know, just wondering whether it's, I'm just wondering whether it's required based on, uh, um, um, you know, HUD maximum allowable rents. That's and, what I was gonna and say, And what's Harry. included. What we've yeah. learned in the past, Harry, is that HUD does require the utilities, but that there is a methodology that says some collection of entities decide that the cost of heat is a hundred dollars right. and then take that off of that maximum rent and then shift the responsibility. So if you want it yeah. higher, then you, you pay more. And if you want it less high, you pay less. So. I wrote that down as a clarification question to Laura. Yeah, because I think at Nokachoke, she said, well, if the rent's a thousand dollars, but we know that the heat is, this much, then the rent is actually nine hundred dollars, and right. that's where they they can pay the utilities. You know, lots to understand. Yes, yeah, so all I'm asking is, can we clarify in our from our responses how they're handling the utilities? Okay. And I, I'll say that with our AADUs, while they lasted, there was that formula uh, determination um, that you pay less if you're paying utilities yeah. on your own, right? We had a way of doing it. Well, somebody said something about a hundred dollar credit toward mm -hmm. um, the rent for utilities. That right. was the. That was at Nokachok. Yeah. Was it there? Okay. I think so. Yeah. I forget. Okay, let's move on to building design for Civico. Um, we've already talked about that sum of liking their buildings and no, um, no space for management. Right, because they they were questioning whether on-site management, as opposed to just 24-hour emergency, was necessary because of their design concept. So um, it doesn't include communities. It doesn't include indoor community space for residents. Right. Um, or office space for management, as far as we could see. Right. There's also no storage space for the units themselves, but they do not indicate there's a basement on their floor plans. Mm -hmm. So, you know, are they allowed to say, oh, okay, we'll put in a basement and that will be storage? Mm -hmm. Or are they relying on just the space that's within the units? Right. right. Yeah, these, these halls that they have that have the bicycle racks and stuff, mm -hmm. they're they're designed, if you look at their, uh, I, that, that if you look at like um, the union studio 
with the two houses connected, there's a mechanical well up at the top of the roof. And then that center white part of the building, I think is some kind of combination of storage and, um, you know, that that's where they put their unsightlies and so forth. Um, I mean, on the first floor, the entry yeah. area? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but there is a limit. To not, how much not where the doors are, where the window is with the window box. It's not, it's not where the door lets you in, right? Well, let's see. Let me, <laughs> let me find it. Um, while you're looking for that, Jan, I do want to say that looking actually at the floor plans is a really important part of it. It's, it's not something I feel that skilled at, so I'm hoping... Um, our architects on the committee and other people that have done more, built, built their own homes and designed. Well, I think we'll, we really want to get into that. Um, um, I think that's a good point, Elaine, because um, I think that um, there were, there are, if you will, uh, problems with regard to floor plan at um, the village at Nossick Green. Um, we know that the mechanicals are in each unit and that compromised um, floor plan, plan and space um, at, at the Bracket Road project. Um, but I've also heard from um, older individuals who are residing there that the stairways in, the, in those units um, are proving um, very difficult for people with mo mobility issues. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think you raise a good point Let's have our two architects look at the floor plan. Um, my uh, glance at their floor plan um, is that they are designed for a variety of household types um, and mobility needs. Um, but that's just my first take on that. Well, I think mobility needs are taken care of by a ground floor unit or elevators. Um, stairs don't exist in a, a accessible unit. So if people are having trouble with stairs at Bracket Road, it's, you know, they are not officially handicapped or whatever. Right. They're just older. <laughs> right. Could I ask a question of our architects? Mm -hmm. This seems to be pretty um, broad uh, differences in the square footage of the proposed units. And, and how, how do we evaluate that? I'm just looking at the civical one here um, and they're suggesting one bedroom 600 and two bedroom 816. And that's quite a bit different than the um, TCB one. That's another thing Laura was going to actually send us sort of uh, the standard. The standard. Well, you know, the minimum. I'm just, I'm yeah, asking the right. question, quality of life, uh, you know, happiness of the tenants. Mm -hmm. um, well, and do we, do we, do we measure that? Do we evaluate that? Mm -hmm. I think they all meet minimum requirements. So right. I understand. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. But yeah. it is a one bedroom that's 600 versus one bedroom that's 750. Is that is that substantially quote unquote better? I don't think we can put a number on it. And, and Gary, I, I think it goes to um, how they're um, how they're dealing with the density on the site. Um, everybody, yep. each per developer is dealing with density yep. um, in, in completely different ways. Yes, you're, um, you're right, Kathleen. I mean, it's a, it's a trade-off. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, the, one of them is, uh, is proposing studios, which are even smaller. Right. And also, this is the only one that doesn't have a, a big building. Well, yeah. I was gonna say that if you were, measuring these as acceptable and unacceptable, which is what we started out doing, 
Uh-huh. This Civico is the only one that meets the height requirement. Right. That's correct. And that's why when you talked earlier about being closer to um, the border of the property, that's why they're using more of the, the topography yeah. to avoid the height. To avoid the height and to avoid big buildings. Um, it makes it, it, it's just a quite a different approach from the other two. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've heard people say if their apartment had to be a little bit smaller, but the walls were thicker between, they would like, prefer that to yeah, um, yeah. a little bit extra space. I know my kids just moved into an apartment in New Jersey that said it was 650 square feet, but it turns out to be 480. It's, it's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> I can't find a storage other than mechanical storage. There is none. I'll no. find, I found the bike racks again, but I can't find anything that says storage for the unit. And um, Elaine, is that a question we can ask them during a presentation? Um, what, what they felt storage would be for these units? I wondered whether or not it has to do with the, the hallway where the stairs are, whether or not that would be considered space. Well, right. No, it's it's a fire hazard if they put stuff. Oh, I know. Okay. You know, so. They have bikes in there, but you can't put boxes and, you know, summer chairs and all that stuff. But they, also, they don't have basements, so they could just say, oh, we'll put basements in. No, that's a huge expense. That's well, a whole But yeah. they don't have storage, so... Right. Right. Yeah, the, the only one that shows any storage at all are the three bedroom cottages and it says storage slash mechanical and uh, mm. kind of what we heard from the property managers is you really want to keep the tenants away from the mechanical space. Right. Because strange things happen when they have access to them. Right. Yeah. So um, that, that is an issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Laura said a, a general question to start with is to explain their um, their vision of what they did, but we could also say which includes <laughs> these elements. So right. They could be storage. To talk to that. But I think the you know the floor plans are something that are going to mean a lot to the tenants, and we have a you know one of our sessions maybe really just looks at what, all three proposals and those much more carefully. Um, That's a great idea, Elaine, a great idea. I mean, just my take on the uh, floor plans is that somehow I like the one bedrooms better than the larger units, but uh, they all work for what we're seeing. They work fairly well, um, but uh, you know, the, some of the bedrooms are very small with this particular building design. There's not a lot of windows. And a lot of the bedrooms have only one window in the larger unit. Uh, what, what we saw on the site visit in the side-by-side -side units, that unless you have an end unit, right. you're not getting yeah. a lot of light. And so that's right. really something to look yeah, at. Yeah, I mean, well, it's, it's, it's the nature of the beast. You're talking about someone trying to update uh, a 150-year-old Greek revival design in a way. Mm -hmm. And the design itself doesn't call for a lot of windows when it's done in a fairly unmannerist way. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's kind of your, if, if you're married to that, you're kind of stuck with, uh, with this kind of um, situation. Okay. Um, I want to make sure we give um, TCB its due this morning, too. Um, I think we covered a lot. Moving right along, right? <laughs> Can I just ask one question? Maybe of the, of the group that went on the site visits. Um, did, did we come to any conclusion about laundry? What we want? Well, I, th I think that we, I certainly did. Oh, uh, Jan, let me, let me hear your conclusion. Well, that I would definitely want to have hookups in my apartment. And maybe the only ones that, I mean, in you'd have to in the Civico anyway, because they don't have 
a central place to do that. Okay. Um, the other places, um, one of them with that, the big building had, had the, um, yeah, they had a place for laundry. Um, so would they also have hookups in the, in the rooms? I don't know, in the units? Civico doesn't show it. Yeah, no. right. I didn't it's see no that place. at all. It doesn't seem to be the room to alter them, to put it in either. That's what Laurel was saying, if they didn't yeah. have I mean, it and they, they didn't they, show a space. That's the layouts are so tight that you know, it would take a major redesign to put even a, a stack unit in, in these places. So they don't think anybody's going to need to wash their clothes? Well, that, that's not possible. Yeah, we'll have, to, we'll have to find out more about that. I, I just think maybe we could ask the question. Yes, right. Good idea. <laughs> well, they do have sinks in the bathrooms and the kitchen. They, they do show wash your baby anyway. <laughs> they do show washer dryer in the uh, three which bedroom cottages. The cottages, yeah. but, which yeah. are my favorite buildings. They, just you, so cute. they have a utility area, Harry. I don't know if that includes what uh, it says I W slash D. W D, yeah. No, no, I'm talking about in the smaller units. Okay, I, I haven't found it in the smaller units if they, it's there. I know all I'm saying is that they have something called utility, U-T-I-L. Yep. I if that includes... No, water. it's like a hot water tank, that sort of thing. Yeah, no, I'm just trying to, yeah. Trying yeah. to find it. Okay. Watch your dryer uh, unit in the uh, three-bedroom. Yep. Um, which I guess it is that... It's not big enough to put a, a washing machine in there. Yeah. You have to do one on top of another, that, that type. So maybe for the sake of, of uh, moving on, we can just ask for clarification. Yep. Uh, okay. Uh, laundry. Okay. So for financial feasibility, we can't really do, they did show their proposed budgets, um, but the rest of it, with a track record of securing proposed financing, uh, a bit of that will come out when references are called, but the, the middle part is part of the pro forma. So, um, and then the reference site visits interviews. Um, Olga typed up a great, um, a great report on our site visits, which I will get out to everybody. I really appreciate you doing that, Olga. Sure. Um, and I was, she asked me to add pictures, but I realized I stopped taking pictures after the first one. So that was, so I just got so much going on anyway. Um, but I think that was, that was a good, a good pass through Civico. And we take a breath and pull out TCB. Okay, developer experience and capacity. Okay, provided a lot of support and information mm -hmm. for that category. Any comments? Uh, <coughs> it, seems, it seems to be a pretty complete um, and robust statement. I agree. Lots of experience. Affordability. I, I think they met all the requirements mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. They mentioned something that in their proposal called income averaging, which um, Laura has spoken about. And I think that's kind of the way where they try to get credit for is, uh, units that are at a higher percentage, but um, I had wanted to ask her to explain that again, but I don't know if it's that important um, in the scheme of things, but they were the only uh, people that mentioned potentially using income averaging. Um, um, do you think that's um, a way of them um, addressing market rate? Potentially, yeah. Okay. So are, are we saying that they 
that it was advantageous or highly advantageous in terms of affordability? Well, I, I think it met, um, it, it looks like, uh, I'm looking at page 22, it looks like 100% of the units are 80% AMI or below. Exactly. And, and that checks the highly advantageous box. Yeah. Okay. Well, Harry, I think it depends about how you actually read it, because I agree with you for the first part, but then mm -hmm. with regard to 30 to 120%, are they still highly advantageous? They're in that range, and that's all we say. That's right. I, right. I'm just saying, depending on how you read it, I, I also gave them highly advantageous, but I'm just questioning myself how you read that and, and how important is it to us that it be at the upper li limit. And, and even if it was at the upper limit, that could change when they go for their financing. Exactly. So, so I think we have to be allow for some less, leeway on that. Yeah. 90%. Yeah, they, they do say on the next page, workforce units will be targeted somewhere in the 80 to 100% AMI range. What page is that, Harry? 20, 23. 23. The, the second full the second full paragraph down from the top. Mm -hmm. Uh, first sentence. They, they give an example. Um, a firefighter with no additional income making 40,000 could afford a 60% AMI, one mm -hmm. bedroom unit. Very low income households will have access to project-based vouchers to assist them with rate, rent payment. Um, so I, I, I think they've um, done quite due diligence on how. I'm just, I'm agreeing, Kathleen. I'm just trying to understand what, what we want. And they also say in that same thing that it's all dependent upon this whole market study that will really determine how much DSTD will allow them <laughs> which we heard from Bracket Road, that's how they got to 90%, I believe. Right. <clears throat> okay. Um, but that's a good question. I mean, we, did, we, we left a big range, 30 to 120%. So, right. <clears throat> okay. And move on to site design. Okay. The only minus, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me. The only two things I flagged in my notes are just noting that the walkway between the two areas crosses the tower access easement. Right. Uh, and uh, they're talking about 1.1 spaces per unit, which uh, does not meet the bylaw in which we were told that every, at, at two of the places we visited, was you know um, problematic to have that little parking. Other than that, I really didn't find anything that I thought was uh, uh, was an issue. My one question was they they often mentioned minimum paving, so I, I really was curious as did they mean dr the driveways, any parts of the road that their pictures sort of showed like a gravel or something. And I don't know how that works with snow removal and stuff like that, but I just was curious about where they envisioned that minimum paving. I'm assuming it's the whole project, um, which is uh, uh, you know, gonna be an issue with um, our environmentalist who, um, you know, who are concerned with uh, pavement. Right, I know, of course. Most, is, yeah. you know, I, I know that when we um, were discussing uh, extending beach parking, um, there was a huge um, controversy that the surface be permeable for water. But mm -hmm. um, so that could uh, be a question that we ask um, for clarification with them. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you can have both. 
uh, commercial street in Provincetown has got permeable pavement. And, you know, mm -hmm. unfortunately, they have to vacuum it instead of street sweeping it, which is the... Uh, it's also very expensive. It, yeah, it's expensive maintenance, but it is possible to uh, avoid having a, you know, a hardscape where all the water is going to be controlled at the edges. Well, we could ask about that, everybody, what the surfaces, what they envision the surfaces to be. Speaking of roads, is it a problem that uh, there's only one entrance and exit for the Lawrence Green part? Um, because it, the road doesn't connect. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you look at Lawrence Green, the road comes in and out uh, the same one place because it doesn't connect with the schoolhouse corner part. I can't picture that the fire department would like that. I, I don't know. Um, they, they, um, they say on page 26, Jan, mm. third, third paragraph down, that the walking path that connects the two mm -hmm. um, sections, of, are you talking about that with regard to the water tower? No, no I'm talking road. about the one egress and entrance is the same for all the units called Lawrence Green. Um, no, they're not. I, I keep looking. I, I wander off camera because I got this thing spread out all over the place. It doesn't matter. Yeah, here. Here. Um, there, is, there is a note on the uh, site plan on page 24 that says uh, service, fire access road, and connecting path. Uh, I guess the the uh, so message there is road? that is that it would and we'll hear from the fire chief on this I'm yeah, sure yeah because otherwise turning around a, a piece of fire equipment on this layout if that's yeah. not connecting is going to be a huge issue yeah um, well they do but, address it Harry on 26 yep. when they yep. say that yep. emergency vehicle access would egress the site through the water tower. Mm. That that's what they're pretty that's what they, yeah. yeah yeah so but jan you're saying that um basically both the uh accesses off of lawrence road would be would be a two-way two-way driveway or street as right. opposed to a one-way that exactly we exactly with the and, and i'm just concerned that you know in an emergency of any kind that would block up um, and it, you know, I, I'm not sure how that would work. Even in the schoolhouse corner, how would anything turn around? I mean, the parallel, it's parallel parking. Those first spaces are parallel parking. So how do you turn around and come out? Even if you're Joe Blow living in one of those units, you've pulled in and parked, and I don't know, is there room to, that, no, it just wouldn't work. <laughs> uh, do you see what I'm saying at the schoolhouse yeah. part? How, how do you turn that your car? Well, um, Jan, I see what you're saying, but I think that we'd have to hear from uh, Chief Pauly and Chief Hurley um, with regard to how that might get addressed, because um, it, you know, obviously everybody's going to have to deal with that. You know? No, other people have made, the other two have, you can go all the way around. This is the only one where you, it's it, one I way. don't think it's the chief, chief of anybody's responsibility, it's our responsibility to see if this is a practical plan because in order to have those parking spaces usable, the, the early ones, you have to have a place for those people to turn around and come back out that same way. Right, yeah, it looks like it would, could be tricky. Elaine. Gary. Uh, <laughs> uh, both in terms of the wastewater and in terms of fire and police, we don't have another meeting between now and the uh, uh, public presentations on the 10th. I'm just wondering if we need 
some time for them to, to weigh in before that. Um, I think if any time they weigh in is gonna be useful. Um, it sounds like Harry might hear from right. the chief before, and I'm gonna to talk to Kurt. Um, we probably ought to just let Mike Hurley know what we're doing too. Just in case. Oh, yeah. I, I suspect the biggest, the most substantial concerns will be from the fire chief. Right. Anyway, I'm, maybe we should consider an, another meeting, give them an opportunity to weigh in and for us to all to hear their comments. I'm not sure. I, I, if you want to schedule them, that's fine. I won't. I would not be able to attend, which is not a problem, because um, they're recorded and you can hear I know them. You're, you're remote, Elaine, but um, mm -hmm. could could you uh, participate via Zoom or no? Mm -hmm. No, no. Potentially, yeah. I mean, I think there's. It's not going to. The plans are not going to change significantly. We're, we're looking for information as we go further along to yeah. make our final decision. We're not gonna, we yeah. can't say, can you change this when we meet with them? I think anytime we get the info is gonna be helpful, but if you'd like to have another meeting next week, we can certainly schedule it. Um, just a, another note about this one. It looks like the area where the existing parking you know, the temporary park, the paved parking we constructed with the temporary police station appears to be undisturbed on their uh, on their site plan. It's approximately 100 by 100. Uh, and that area appears to be undisturbed here. So they don't say they're going to remove it or keep it, but it certainly wouldn't require moving buildings or roadways around to keep it. Correct. I undisturbed. You mean it's treed? Well, it's 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 paved. It's paved. not proposed to be disturbed by their their project. Yeah, but on the yeah on the picture, it's all trees. So right. yeah, well. So in their parking, they mentioned that they're going to have total fifty three parking spaces. Um, out of the fifty three spaces, forty eight spaces are for residents, and five of those spaces are for staff and visitors. Mm. Yeah. Um, five of the 53 spaces um, will be handicapped. But it, you know, I mean, again, we don't, we're, we're thinking that in this particular proposal that might not be enough parking. No. Um, no. So no. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm marking them advantageous. I did not give them a, um, you know, a, a higher score on this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay well let's yeah, finish I, up and we can see how people feel about an extra meeting to try to get a couple more people to weigh in before we meet the hear the presentations jay did you were you going to say something no okay any more comment on site design there's one, one, one thing that I'm noticing, and I think Harry called attention to it earlier, <coughs> that, uh, some sort of a connecting path crossing the water tower right away. Yeah. It looks to me like it's some sort of an underplayed, maybe emergency roadway or something that connects. That's what they refer to it as, Jay. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. And uh, so that does make a loop around here. Yep. Right. But uh, it's not for the a, a car. It's for emergency. Well, that's what that's what's on it's part of it looks like it may be for a car. I, you know, it it it's unclear to me. Let's put it They're that referring way. to it as an emergency vehicle egress. So I'm assuming that you can get an emergency vehicle right. through fire, that path. Fire access, but not yeah. for people. Yeah, but if, if it's a okay, the unless it's gated off, the residents are gonna use it. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah, the path could easily be moved, and it, but it could still keep the fire. Uh, with but a, we a, have we have to judge so. what's what's kind of given to us, I suppose. Yeah, right. I like yeah. I, I, correct me if I'm wrong. I got the impression from Paul Millet that the easement from Lawrence from Long Pond Road to the water tower wasn't an area where he felt compelled to have exclusive control as long as, as he had access. Right. It was the area, the fenced circular area around the water tower that he really wanted to be kept yeah. free of anything that could interfere with, you know, maintenance and, and uh, repair operations. Yes. So if, if that assumption is correct, then that could be turned into, you know, make that roadway a loop. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I heard too. And, you know, we didn't really specify that that fenced in area had to remain as is. And most people have done something with that area. So, you know, we can, I think that's yeah. a legitimate. Remain, Elaine, is, is the circular fence around the water tower. Right, right. So they put trees around it. Okay, anything more on site design? Gonna okay. take a pretty big tree to hide the water tower. <laughs> <laughs> okay, infrastructure and green design. Um, a, a question on the uh, wait, I'm sorry, I, I did have a question. Was did anyone? Notice whether or not they had bike racks. Some do. There, there is yeah. a yeah. 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 Yes, they had bike racks, Jim. Okay. It's shown on the overall landscape plan. Right. Oh, okay. I see it now. Yes. Somewhere there's one. There's yeah. another one. Yeah. Oh, I didn't, worth, but these yeah. do. Yeah. For what it's worth, they're the only folks that show no removal site too. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you t and storage and all kinds of good and, stuff. And actually, Jan, you like this. That it says very clearly, <laughs> laundry will be provided with each apartment. Yay! <laughs> Love it. Yeah, I wonder how they're going to do that, Gary, in the studio. <laughs> I'm only reading. <laughs> <laughs> there's no place to sit, but there's a washer in the dryer. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, I think under this, in terms of wastewater, um, you know, what we heard from abutters is we've heard a lot of reasons how this is going to help the Duck Creek watershed, but uh, I'm not sure, and this, because the, we haven't heard how it's going to affect abutters, and that's a big question. People are concerned that leaching of nitrates and residue from pharmaceuticals are going to compromise their wells. That's the big question we heard from abutters. So uh, I'm definitely going to be running that by Kurt. And then if we need more info um, from on-site about that. But you know, we've been sort of talking about that all as a benefit to Duck Creek in that direction. But we have to get some information about how, you know, what the effects, if any, or improvements would be to our abutters. Well, um, I'll just speak about going back to, um, you know, going back way, go, go back on this, in, in that um, when we were investigating um, an IA system for this site, um, that would have been more of a question for abutters. With this, um, you know, with this RFP, we've um, inserted a wastewater treatment system. So it's highly unlikely um, with a wastewater treatment system that anything like pharmaceuticals or any of that is going to leach out. This is actually a benefit um, to anybody that's up on that hillside in that we're, we're reducing it to almost zero. Um, I need but, a, they need a clearer statement on that. Yeah, Back no, I, 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 I hear you, yeah. Jim? So what I would say specific to compounds other than nitrates. Yeah. 
I think I, we've been talking about the value in reducing nitrates, mm -hmm. system, but in fact, there is a leaching area designed underneath the ball field and right. some to be leaching out there, whether it's clean effluent. Mm -hmm. or, so we just need someone to comment on that. That, that is the question. They refer to that leaching field and you know what, what that's going to produce. Right. Harry? You have your hand uh, up? I did not have my hand up. Okay. Or if I did, it's left over. Oh, no, that's my stupid cursor. Sorry. <laughs> that shows up <laughs> the hand sometimes. Oh. I have to make it so big that I can see it, that it turns into a hand. <laughs> it looks like a clown hand. It's a big white hand. <laughs> it's amusing. Where, where oh, we're did... muddling along here. Good, good. Yeah. Where did they explicitly state that they would... Uh, that they include 44% of the uh, wastewater treatment plant. I don't see it, Harry. I have kind of a note, but I can't figure out in the document where it is. Harry. On page 29. Okay. Um, I, I would think it would be on page 29. They mentioned the wastewater system that they wholly support the town's prior, prioritization of it, but that they don't give us a percentage. Does it show in their budget figures at all? No, I, I, the only one that I saw that actually had the, the wastewater was the POA in their uh, uses of capital. Mm -hmm. um, I just looked at the, the community builders one and um, it's not specifically uh, mentioned. And I have a question to myself here about the wastewater costs. So it may, should we ask that question? I, I think the other question I have is I'm assuming that the cost for the deconstruction of the old COA is included, but nowhere do I see it explicitly. That mm -hmm. was a, it's not in our evaluation criteria, but it is on our uh, requirements and within the RFP uh, document. Right. I think I saw it on Civico. Yeah, no, it say we, it. We, we, we applaud it. Yeah, didn't actually have the dollars. Yeah, I saw it. It was on, it was on Civico on page seven. Yeah. I don't know where it is here. I haven't seen it in um, TCB. I have a note here that says second page after page 66, but I can't find page 66. <laughs> so <laughs> that doesn't help. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we will, we will search for that in the future, unless somebody finds it right now. Um, I think we have such different proposals from each for green design in a way. Um, the question that, I mean, this one, they specified lead 75 plus or higher. Um, they could make the roof solar ready, but that was something they wanted to talk to the town more about how important it was to them. Um, there are big decisions in this area, I think, and the differences amongst the proposals. Good. Can I just speak to Harry's comment? Harry, the second page after 66 refers to POA. Oh. And it's the $764 $764,000 wastewater infrastructure under uses of, of capital. Okay, but so that's the wrong Not in proposal. This line, the second line down from, from that. I didn't see it in the other two specifically. I saw a verbiage to it, but I didn't actually see the dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we saw interesting examples of the stormwater management they're talking about through yeah. plantings and stuff like that at um, Nokachoke. Um, and issues of retention from the wastewater. It was interesting that neither of the wastewater plants from outside seemed to have any odor. None, no. Um, but the three thousand dollars a month in electric costs electricity to run it. 
that that was an overwhelming number, I thought. Well, that that plant services a whole bunch of a whole bunch of units. Yeah. yeah. Well, so the, the Nokachoke one that was three thousand, and that's what 44, 45 units. Yeah. Mm. Yep. But remember I'm that thinking of, of the town, not a cost to the developer. Right. But you know what, Harry? Yep. I, what I was struck with was we don't have any gas. So they had a huge backups uh, system generator. Mm -hmm. And really big. Probe. We must have to have really big probe to run oh. that generator. Well, we're going to put those. Yeah, I mean, Town Hall's got a generator that's oil, you know, that's, I don't know, oil fired or gasoline right. fired or something. Um, the police station has one that I believe is propane fired, if memory serves me. Right. How, how big were the tanks that they put in for the police station? Um, I don't recall. It's, it's a pretty big tank because I think it does some other, you know, it's not just the generator. Right. I'm just saying. I'm off. I'm off topic, but um, it will be a consideration for the wastewater folks. Yep. So, uh, Elaine, are we still on infrastructure and green design? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I thought they met all the requirements, mm -hmm. um, it, it, with the exception of they have not mentioned, um, you know, ponying up for the wastewater. Um, I do not find it anywhere. Uh, I think that's a big question here. They just support um, it. Yeah. Well, we're, we're asking the developer to, um, you know, in their financials to provide at least come in at forty-four percent of the cost. Yeah. We we could ask the question, Elaine. Do you commit to the forty-four percent or seven hundred sixty thousand, whatever it is? It's not in their financials either, so. Yeah. I almost thought they were doing an old fashioned wastewater plan. Um, the way it looked to me, somehow. Okay, uh, so we move on to building design. Yes. It's ugly. <laughs> Yeah. I know this is funny, Jan, but that's actually not one of our criteria. <laughs> I know, I know. That's why I tried to just. <laughs> that looks very much like a lot of Greek Revival era buildings that you see around Wellfleet. That's so close together, you don't see that. Yeah, um, I, I look at this, um, their, their building design and um, I, 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 I just, I don't know if it fits Wellfleet. I see, it just looks like public housing. Um, Harwich, Dennis, Hyannis, Yarmouth. Um, you know, these are big buildings. Um, and, and while it's, you know, uh, New England style architecture, it's just the size of it, you know? Mm -hmm. The view and, um, on page 38 is pretty frightening to me. I, I thought the scale was kind of large myself. <clears throat> and I, and it, their trim, their preferred trim style does look a little bit, if you were going to compare it to some other uh, public housing projects, it would be closer than some of these other. Uh, I, you know, that, that may be a, a result of the fact that they've preserve so much of the property around the edges that it's all sort of jammed together. Exactly. Well, yeah, exactly. again, it's how, it, how they're dealing with density on this, pro on this property. Right. right. Yeah. Um, do we like this, you know, the density of, of this, um, you know, of the, you know, of how they cited the, the, the buildings on this. Uh, yeah. Personally, I don't, but you know, I'll let everybody else say something. Uh, 
I don't know. I like this one better than um, uh, Poa's design, frankly. I, I agree with you there, Harry. Yeah. Agree with that too. I'm wondering if their renderings weren't really showing what it's going to look like. Because, I mean, I thought the schoolhouse corner looked more like a mashup of a quarter cape and a half cape and a salt box all put together, which. Yeah, I didn't mind the, the schoolhouse corner so much. I mean, the, the, main, the main section that looks just very dense to me. No. Well, they're all dense. Yep. Yep. No. no. They all, yeah. They're, they're, well, it's, some okay. are more creative than others. Mm -hmm. um, I, I also, um, you know, I, I really didn't like um, their landscaping. Um, they want to bring in boulders and um, large stones and you know what the glacier didn't leave that stuff here <laughs> I, I don't think that's part of our natural look um you will see stones when you get up to west barnstable um, Brewster. Brewster. And, and brewster but they're bringing in landscaping materials that i thought were quite incongruous to the site itself mm -hmm. Those are my comments. On the site visit, Westport was about the same size as the ones we have proposed. And it seems like that design was the one most closely resembles this. I, I ask other people on the, on the site visit. Was that one? Yeah. That, that one um, was, you know, the wide street. Uh, yeah. A lot more space. I think they, they had 15 acres yeah. or something like that. Um, they had a lot more room and it was not, it didn't look anything like this to me. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. nearly as dense. Right. So did we, we didn't see one and, the, and Chatham was the same. It was uh, spread not, out, not dense. Mm -hmm. Although I don't know if it was on some such a bigger property, but. I don't really know. They had lots of individual, um, what am I trying to say? Choke. <laughs> I'll call it it. Choke. Um, it, had, it had a lot of charm, I thought, because of the different um, individual entrances with little uh, spaces for people to make it pretty, cement. Um, patios in front of the doors. Um, it went in and out, but I hated where their washers and dryers were. I thought that was just awful. I'm sorry. I'm no, no, no. Yeah. I mean, the, their buildings were more consistent. They looked similar. Um, there was some color variation, but it was very consistent. Mm -hmm. where, where it feels like our three proposals are really trying to mix it up, you know, and thinking that uh, potentially smaller. Uh, this so one is just brown and white or gray and white. That's it, right? Gray and white. It looks it that way, yeah. Yeah. On page 38, that's what I keep looking at. And. Uh, yeah. One, one, one building looked like Bill Vernon. It looked like they. Yes, it does, Elaine. That's yes. so funny you say that. Looks like what? Okay, all the Bill places Vernon. we saw oh. were, were pretty much the same palette. I mean, there wasn't, yeah. there wasn't a lot of variations on, you know, no. green and faded gray. Right. I, I've been looking at Wellfleet in a whole different way as I drive around and walk around now. And it's really true. Things are really plain. <laughs> <laughs> and not very ornamented, except in our wonderful downtown. Um, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, this was the one that had eight studios too at 575 square feet. Yeah. But I think that doesn't uh, Civico have even smaller, some 450? On the studios, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> anything more under building design? Okay. Same thing with financial feasibility. We know they have a track record of pr proposed financing. Oh, wait a minute. Um, just because we've already mentioned it, I didn't mention it this time, but maybe should. The height variance that's going to be needed. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to we have to consider that too. And I think Paula does Paula have to ask for that too for right. The, Very much right. So. Right. Yeah. right. But the, both POA and TCB are going to go for um, a comprehensive um, permit, right? Um, and um, you know that would be uh, that would come up during that permitting process, right? Okay. There's our first pass through all three of them. Um, I did notice one thing, which may be kind of snobby or whatever, but all their this guy, all their, their leaders for the New England, UCP. All their, all their they're what? All, they all have like, mass, one has a master's from MIT, another one a master's from Penn. And I mean, they all went to Ivy League schools. It's just kind of interesting. <laughs> they, they really did have an, an, an impressive collection of uh, academic credentials. Really? It, it's mind blowing. Cornell is yeah. in there too. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Don't be a snob. I was say, are we grading up or grading down on that? <laughs> I, I graded up. <laughs> I that was terrific. It hurt. <laughs> <laughs> so, Elaine, are we going to discuss um, possible questions um, for the presentations? I'd like to do that. Um, have we made a list? I haven't made a list yet. Um, I was I had asked Laura for some some you know additional help on that, but haven't gotten anything yet. I mean, we could schedule a meeting for next um, Wednesday to um, have some questions in front of us to review and to try to hear from Kurt if possible, and any reports from the chief if we want to do that or otherwise. We can get questions together, send them around, have people say yes, no. Um, I'm yeah. open to as many meetings as, as we need to do. Um, I have been thinking about a question that I would like to ask each developer during their presentations. And um, maybe I, I'll put it out there so that we can um, all think about it. Um, in looking over all three um, proposals and doing just what you have said, Elaine, walking around the community of Wellfleet. I've also um, walked um, the Lawrence Road property again, um, completely. So my question to all three developers during their presentation, um, what is their personal perception of Wellfleet as a community? What, you know, what in one paragraph can they give me as a description of how they perceive wealthy, because we are uniquely different in the summer than we are in the winter. Um, our demographic has changed post COVID. I can't even say post COVID yet, we're not there yet. Um, but it's, it, it would be of great interest to me to know that each developer, what is their perception of wealthy? And I would have a better understanding of of the plans um, and, and proposals that they've given us. Um, be, I don't know how anybody else feels about that question. It's an interesting question, but something that's um, on my mind is um, sometimes when people are making a presentation, they go on and on um, with their allotted time 
Um, and then you end up with not enough time to talk about possibilities, to talk about questions, to get answers. So somehow I would like these developers who make the presentation know that they should answer things as succinctly as possible because we have so many things we want to talk to them about. And we know there is only a certain amount of time when we have to move on. Well, we can have a timekeeper, Jan. Um, you know, we can simply, one of us can simply um, be a timekeeper um, with regard to each proposal and, you know, just do this when they're getting close to their time. I know, um, you know, when I was with the Wealthly Community Forum, a lot of people can go over their time allotment. So, um, Fortunately, we had Barbara Gray back then, but she was. A <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, you know, Laura suggested that the first question that you give to everybody is, um, you know, can you speak briefly to your vision for this project? And you can say right. as related to Wellfleet as a community. And right, that, that would do it. That would work it in. Um, and I think after that question, then our, <laughs> Our clarifying questions are what we want because we want, you know, we want as much real information as possible. Elaine, I would be comfortable with having you or you and Harry ask all the questions. I mean, we could come up with the list of questions, but rather than taking the time to go back and forth to people, if mm -hmm. you want to either take the lead or you and Harry take the lead on actually asking all of them. Yeah, it should be the host that asks the questions. Be yeah. able to monitor it better and, and you know, keep them on, on right. track. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think that works. I mean, I, I would be very happy to share that duty, um, mm -hmm. especially since I'm going to be really remote in case anything went um, wrong. Are we going to have Rebecca on board by then? Rebecca yes. Slick? Yes. Um, I, I would like to nominate her. Um, has the one that's asking the questions. I How does anybody else feel about that? that she hasn't I, been part of the process. Yeah, yeah I suspect yeah. that we are much more familiar with the right. content of these proposals right. than she okay. is. Okay, yeah, all right. Right, no, I, I think so. I think the combination of Harry and Elaine would be best. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, you know, Laura said, ideally, they they talk for 20 minutes. Um, I know we felt that might be a little too short for the importance and size of this project to us. So if we gave them 30, mm -hmm. and we had 10 to 15 for our follow-up questions. And if it runs longer, that's fine because I actually scheduled like a half, you know, maybe too much downtime in between. And, I, and I, we're not gonna wanna deliberate or discuss afterwards, so. No. Um, a longer presentation could work for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I bet that downtime evaporates pretty quickly, Elaine. Yeah. Uh, I'm wondering if asking about their perception of wealthly wouldn't, uh, I don't know how useful that is because they may want to flatter us. Yeah. They, they might not be honest about <laughs> their perception of who we are and I don't think we want them to go through those gymnastics and thinking oh what's the best way to well I, I just I meant do they see us as a year-round community do they see us as um, a summer resort community not you know us personally or whatever but you know yeah I, th I thought some of them addressed that pretty well in their applications actually in the beginning Things. Um, I mean, I thought Civico really kind of addressed that very nicely. And, and then in others, as they talk about the wages of so many of our people and how low right. their wages are, but we're an aging population and, you know, we're going to need these people. I, feel, I felt like, I think they all have people involved with them that are pretty, know the community. pretty yeah. connected. I mean, POA has CDP as a part of it. Um, so I think we really want some heart, maybe a little harder core right. <laughs> questions. Where are you going to put your storage? And <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, the things that are really, I mean, important to the tenants, important to the look of the place. Um, 
it sort of it sort of drives me nuts that everybody says, well, so shield it so people don't see it. <laughs> I mean, let's have a design that people would love to see. You know, right. Uh, right. I think I think about walking around our downtown that's so dense and so interesting. But you know, the reality is we need to keep it as you know low yeah. key as possible. I I might I would probably be inclined to ask them. Uh, Questions to flesh out uh, details, mm -hmm. uh, things like uh, how they plan to address the tenants' laundry needs and storage needs, uh, whether they explicitly commit to supporting the wastewater treatment plant uh, as required by the RFP, mm -hmm. um, their thoughts on vehicle circulation, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. their thoughts on, on parking, um, their thoughts on uh, the design, the massing and the design as it relates to what they see in the rest of Wellfleet, things like that to, to get more information about their proposal as opposed to engaging in a, a redesign mm -hmm. uh, or, or trying to design the project for them. Mm -hmm. So, so Harry, could down. you write all those write down. down? Write that down, Harry. That's, oh, I yeah. did already. That's yes. perfect. Yes. Thank you. I, I, mean, that, I mean, that's even better than asking their vision. This breaks it down yeah. into their vision and the, re and the realities. Um, They're both important things, but yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, we could just ask them at the end to speak to their vision a little bit more if they wanted to, but these are, these are really good questions. Right. Yep. We can run them by Laura too, and just, you know, make sure they're yeah, and I think Gary wanted to have air conditioning question in there too, because there's a way to understand that. One of them, I think the community builder specifically talks about air sourced heat pumps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, would provide heating and cooling. Yeah. Which would provide all. heating and cooling. But, but I, I think, think so it, would, it would be good to get clarity on that if they are, in fact, proposing air conditioning, and if so, how. Okay. Hey, are we tired enough? <laughs> no. I, got, I have three granddaughters running around the house. So I got, uh, well, they're pretty quiet, in, Harry. Well, that's because yeah. there are two closed doors between me and them right now. <laughs> You're a very lucky man. Goodbye, but, everybody. But I got to go play with them. Are we saying no extra meeting next week? We're Just gonna... circulation of questions. Harry, 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 Harry. Oh, I'll no, get no. those questions. Uh, probably I'd love to get Olga's notes. Yep, we'll send along. And could we encourage um, Laura to send us the um, score sheet that we're going to need right after well, that? You may, you should find it in your email. And if you can't, yeah. let me know. I had trouble downloading it, as I said. I, I, I couldn't download it either. Okay, so I'll, I'll take a look. We'll see. A what... PDF would be good, not a Word document. Mm -hmm. so it, was a, it was a spreadsheet. Yeah, it's Excel. Yeah, it's, Excel. it's Excel. Yeah. Uh -oh. I didn't see Excel, Excel. but it, not everybody can open that. No. Uh, Elaine, are we giving them the questions beforehand or are we just asking them them uh, during the session? I mean, the ones that we can ask everybody, we can give them beforehand, I believe. Um, Laura said that's an option. We can double check with her. Um, nobody has you know, only Civico said, I'm gonna get back to you to ask more about it. Nobody else has. Um, they've probably done this a lot, but. Um, this is where I, the reason I asked about this being a public meeting because they will, they can see these questions right now. And yeah, so exactly. maybe we better hand them an official determination of what you wanna ask. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, we can say that these are the things we'd like you to address in your, your part of the presentation, and then, and then we will follow up with some specifics to your, your, propose, your unique proposal. Yeah, we could do that. Okay. Yeah, we might get better answers than if we spring them on them exactly. <laughs> without having heard. heard them. Um, should should we um okay so i know kurt had said he could potentially come to the 13th meeting september 13th i mean i i think you know it's not going to change 
the presentation. So if we can wait to do that then, right. that would be great. And, and what about, can we get the fire chief to come then to ask him? I have asked him, I, I, I have waited to hear back. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, I mean, can we invite him to the meeting on the 13th? 13th. To give his uh, input and sure. whether fire and police or. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could have all of them. Yeah. Yep. Be good. Yeah. And we will have Becky back then, so that'll be good. Um, thank you so much. You, I really appreciate how how all of you are working on this. And uh, it's going to be, you know, it's just a great group. Um, thank you so much. Um, we'll, we can send the draft questions to you and to Laura to get a little feedback before, we, before I send them. Yeah. Or, I mean, even, even if Rebecca wanted to send them after she gets back, I don't know. I think it's probably fine for us to send them. I think she'd Sorry, probably prefer I, that. <laughs> is this um, not deliberation? Hmm? Is it deliberating when we're doing it off out of the public? Or is that OK? I don't know why I'm just fixing it. Um, you mean making a list of questions would be considered well, deliberating? Yeah. yeah I, make, making, making a list and sending it to everybody is one thing getting feedback from you all that says, I don't like this question and I want to change that question. That's, that's so clearly really deliberating. Uh, but, so but, if, but, we're gonna, if we're gonna okay. hash over these questions, we should do it at a meeting. Mm -hmm. But two of us can deliberate and come up with the final questions, right? Yeah. Yeah. As long as the rest of you are willing to be satisfied with whatever the product is, uh, period. Okay. Yeah. No, no debate, no comments from the peanut gallery. We, we okay. may not be satisfied, but we may be willing to accept them. That would be acceptable. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you. So Thank you. see you all <laughs> next Friday at 10. Okay. okay. Forward to. Enjoy your time, Elaine. Yes. Thank you. yeah. well, all right. Take care, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.